So this week I decided to analyze Enemy. And I have to get two things out of the way really quickly. First thing, last week I didn't make a new video because we had a heat wave in my city and it was unbearable to edit in my room. Second, I couldn't find a rental or stream of Old Boy anywhere, which is what I was supposed to analyze this week. I'm gonna try to get a Blu-ray of Old Boy and then I'll make a video. I'll keep you updated. Anyway, I saw Enemy last week and it was obviously incredible. Denis Villeneuve is a master director. So welcome to Classic Explained Episode 7, Enemy. To break this movie down, I'm gonna use three themes. One, fear of commitment, where we'll discuss the main character's inner conflict and the spiders. Two, repetition of chaos, where we'll discuss the chaos's order quote, human nature versus societal norms, the Hegel and Marx quote, and the film's title. And three, consequence of infidelity, where we'll discuss the story structure, the meaning of the two identical characters, infidelity versus commitment, Mary and Helen, Helen meeting Adam, the cinematography and weather, and the ending with the letter and the key and the big spider, and much more. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. And if you wanna see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, fear of commitment. I know it may seem when watching this film that there are likely a million different hidden messages to uncover, but overall, there's only really one central idea that this film is trying to communicate. And this one idea is a man's inner struggle between commitment and infidelity. Throughout the entire film, we are watching our main character struggle desperately against literally himself to try to sustain a life in a committed relationship. And of course, as we watch this movie, we can see that there are two characters each representing a different side of the same man. Adam, who represents a life of commitment, and Anthony, who represents a life of infidelity. For now, I'll describe them both as our main character because that's who they both are, but later I'll address them each by their separate names to focus on their individual actions and what they each represent. And I will certainly go into way more depth about each of these characters later in this video, but right now I wanna to touch on the symbols of the spiders. The spiders in this movie represent the fear of commitment to a monogamous relationship. The idea of being with one woman for our main character is like a magnified version of being in the presence of a spider. It's something our main character is always in fear of, always resisting, and it's as if a committed relationship is like a spider web that our main character feels like he will be trapped in, only to be in the company and under the control of the spider the woman he is with. This is why the main character has a nightmare of a woman with a spider head fusing the images of the symbol and the reality. We also get the scene at the beginning of the movie where a private dancer is about to squash a spider with her high heel. This moment symbolizes our main character killing the idea of a committed relationship with one woman. And this goes hand in hand with the fact that he's at a private show where a random woman is masturbating in front of a group of men. And there's also my personal favorite spider symbol in the movie, where our main character's mother is scolding him for his inability to commit to a sustainable life without a woman. And in the following shot, we get the biggest spider in the film, of course representing the main character's mother, who is the biggest female threat about commitment in his life. She is a woman who our main character is unconditionally committed to and is constantly instilling values of commitment into him. Just like the visual of this enormous spider, she is an everlasting, lurking female threat to our main character's temptation towards infidelity. This shot also ties in with the poster we see in the background of the movie store, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, which is also a film based on a relationship involving an unfaithful man. And of course, there is the super scary final moment in the movie with the last spider, but I wanna to touch on that in the end of this video. Theme number two, repetition of chaos. In the beginning of the film, we get a quote that says, chaos is order yet undeciphered. And this quote very nicely ties in with the actions and the thoughts of our main character in this movie. And I'll explain what I mean this way. Sometimes we as people do things that are out of the societal ordinary or not necessarily civilized, such as screaming at our boss who we're tired of, or dancing in public because we passed our final exam, or cheating on our partner with someone we are very attracted to. But these actions, good or bad, all seem to stem from natural feelings within us that are pushing against the societal norm that we have learned. 
Anger is natural, happiness is natural, and sexual attraction is natural. And please, I hope you know, I'm not saying cheating is justifiable. It's not justifiable, it's not good, it's not fair to your partner in any way. All I'm saying is sexual attraction is inevitable. It's just important for us to maintain our own self-control and recognize the one-of-a-kind love we have for our partner. And if we truly have this one-of-a-kind love for our partner, being faithful is extremely easy. Which brings me back to this quote. This quote is basically saying, if we can't maintain our own self-control, these actions of chaos deriving from natural feelings will happen over and over and over again until this chaos becomes its own form of order. And this theme of chaos repeating itself is symbolized through our main character's lecture in his history class about Hegel and Marx. He says, it was Hegel who said that all the greatest world events happened twice. And then Karl Marx added, the first time it was a tragedy, the second time it was a farce. This quote relates to the life of a partner who cheats. The first time someone cheats, it's tragic for the relationship. But the more times the partner cheats, the more of an inevitable running joke the relationship becomes. The relationship becomes laughable and essentially meaningless. We also hear his lectures on limited education, censorship, and societal control. As we see him living the same day over and over again, he takes the same bus to work, gives the same lectures, and has sex with the same woman. And throughout this film, we can see that Adam, the committed side of our main character, is just dying to break out of this lifestyle of commitment and order. For our main character, the enemy is society, constructed with order, including the expectation of trapping oneself in the web of monogamous romantic commitment. But also, on the flip side of our main character's mind, the enemy is the inevitable temptation towards infidelity. Therefore, the enemy is himself. This faithful and sustainable lifestyle feels monotonous and miserable for him, almost as if it's not natural. Which brings me to my breakdown of the two sides of our main character in theme number three, Consequence of Infidelity. I know in 2013, when this movie came out, a lot of people were searching for the concrete answers to every detail in this movie, and it was all the more frustrating because Denis Villeneuve, the director, gave away nothing. But I really think this film's structure is designed not to have a specific timeline. It's purposely structured to have continuity errors that make it hard for our brain to grasp the order of events. There is no concrete timeline. The only thing we can say for sure is these two characters each represent different sides of the same man. And the only purpose of this entire story is to showcase the inner conflict within one man between commitment and infidelity. So let's break this down. As said before, Adam represents our main character in the present, living a life of commitment. Anthony represents our main character from the past, living a life of infidelity. And also, as said before, there is no concrete timeline. The only reason I know Anthony is based in the past and Adam is based in the present is because Adam has this torn picture of him and some ex-partner. Later in the film, we see at Anthony's place, the photo is not torn, and that ex-partner of Adam is Helen, who is Anthony's current partner. Both phases of this man's life are being fused and blended to create this story. And we see this duality throughout the film, where Adam is working a sustainable job as a history professor. He transits to work every day. He is loyally spending time and having sex with the same woman, Mary. And I would assume her name is Mary because she represents the committed monogamous relationship that Adam is currently going for, similar to being married. Anthony is an actor who rides a motorcycle and is actually married to Helen, who is pregnant with their child. Helen being pregnant is also a major symbol of commitment. A woman's pregnancy is a defining moment in a man's long-term loyalty. Unfortunately, Anthony is not the faithful man that he needs to be for his wife and child. At one point in the movie, Helen actually makes a trip to the university and meets Adam, and then confronts Anthony about the fact that Adam exists. And at this moment, it almost seems as if Helen knows for a fact that Anthony is also Adam. And she's claiming that Anthony is lying about not knowing who Adam is. He had the same voice. He looks exactly like you. What's happening? I think you know. 
And I think at the first glance, it may seem that Helen is aware that the main character has this multiple personality disorder because Adam steps off screen right before Anthony answers Helen's phone call. But personally, I think multiple personality disorder is not exactly the point. I think this conversation is symbolic of the fact that Helen is telling our main character that he can't keep fighting with himself between being faithful and unfaithful. He needs to decide on who he is and be honest about that. He needs to either be a faithful man like Adam is trying to be or be a single man like Anthony should be. The only problem with Adam, which I've mentioned before in theme number two, is he is desperately struggling to maintain this life of commitment. We can see him gradually losing touch with this lifestyle as he loses confidence in his lectures, avoids time with Mary, and hurts Mary when they're in bed. Adam's temptation gradually builds of wanting to go back to being the deceiving, unfaithful, and uncommitted man that Anthony is. Even the dreary greenish-brown color correction to the film and the endlessly foggy backdrop all signify the depression and uncertainty that's weighing down on the mind of our main character. The radio station actually says sunshine, a high of 24 today, but we never see sun or any blue in the sky at all. And another thing that I noticed is the mindset of these two characters is cleverly reflected in their occupations. Adam is a history teacher, symbolizing his obsession with his own past. Anthony is an actor, symbolizing the fact that he is pretending to be a faithful man to Helen. Adam sees Anthony in a movie and recognizes that the two of them look identical. And soon enough, Adam becomes obsessed with meeting Anthony. This symbolizes Adam's overwhelming temptation to return to his old self. But once Adam reaches Anthony on the phone, he really struggles to let Anthony know he wants to meet him. Adam's stuttering and inability to speak clearly of course signifies that he knows that returning to his old self is wrong. But eventually, Adam and Anthony do agree to meet, which makes sense because in order for both sides of this main character to exist within one man, they each need to be curious about exploring the mind of one another. And during this meetup at the hotel, it's confirmed Adam and Anthony are the same person since they have the same scar on their side. Eventually, Adam flees the scene because he's too frightened by the reality of reverting all the way back to his old self. But after this, it's Anthony who develops a new level of curiosity for the life of Adam. Anthony spies on Adam, discovering that he is with Mary. Anthony then follows Mary, stalking her eyeing her body up and down on the train, following her to work, determining that this is the next woman that he wants to cheat on Helen with. Since Anthony represents the deceitful and sexually tempted side of the main character, we see him rehearsing an act of intimidation that he will perform at Adam's apartment, and he does this to Adam in order to sleep with Mary for one night. And it seems that Adam actually lets Anthony do this in order to give himself a second chance at connecting with the woman he deep down believes he should be with, Helen. And this moment where Adam and Anthony switch roles can be the most confusing part of the movie because the timelines are so mismatched and blended and the decision for them to pursue each other's partners seems so drastic. But I think the point of this moment is to show us which side of this main character is going to come out successful. The side trying to be faithful, returning to the woman he was married to, or the side surrendering to infidelity, manipulating everyone around him in order to get what he wants. But eventually, clearly, in the end, we see that Adam is the one who succeeds within the main character's mind. Anthony, as a cheater, is caught by Mary and eventually kills Mary and himself in the car. This symbolizes the death of the unfaithful side in the main character's mind. We also cleverly see a cracked window of the flipped car that Anthony is trapped in in the shape of a spider web. This symbolizes that the main character is now committing and locking himself in to a long-term romantic relationship. Helen happily and comfortably recognizes that it's not the unfaithful Anthony, but the committed Adam who is in bed with her. And we know this when she asks him, how was school? And soon after, the two of them are making love to each other. 
But unfortunately, in the next scene, when everything seems like it's all good, Adam opens the letter he gave back to Anthony at the hotel when he finds it in his jacket. The letter contains the key to the club in the beginning of the film where the women masturbate in front of him and several other men. Adam sadly once again surrenders to this sexual temptation. He says to Helen, Helen, did you plan on doing something tonight? Because I think I have to go out. At this exact moment, Helen knows exactly why Adam wants to go out. Adam has once again repeated his own form of chaos, becoming again what he once was. Adam has once again become Anthony, and his life has become a repeating joke, the farce that he mentioned in his history lessons. You could even start the film again from the beginning, and it would continue right from the ending where Adam is now Anthony at this private show. In the next moment, our main character tries to find Helen, who is not replying, and soon enough, in her place, we see a giant spider retreating to the back of the room. The final symbol of our main character's fear of commitment and Helen's fear of a partner who will never escape his continuous loop of infidelity. All right, that's my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. And please let me know your thoughts and theories on Enemy in the comments below because this movie can go in so many different ways. There's so much here. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.